What's up guys, welcome back to Jadabadin TV. Today's another amazing day to get after it. I'm gonna be better today than we were yesterday. And for today's video, to, with me today I have Joe, um, the founder of Soccer Visa, and he's gonna be joining us today and he's gonna be telling you guys his story on how he became a professional player. And which teams did you play on? I played here, I played in America for the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars, who are now the Red Bulls. Played for Real Maryland, who were in the USL at the time, but they folded. Played in Iceland for Thor Akureyri, and in Finland for VPS, Yaro, and IFK Mariam, and in Italy for Salernitana. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, I've been in Costa Rica here for the past two weeks, training with the team, staying at the facility, and I heard his story, and I really think you guys will benefit a lot just hearing how hard it was for him and how he signed his first professional contract to where his journey took him. So today we're gonna be listening to Joe and his story on how he signed a professional contract. All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, thanks for JDTV, I call him JD. So we're gonna say JDTV for having me on here. Um, I hope this story lets a lot of you guys that have aspirations of playing professionally understand it can be done, but it's difficult. I was a guy that was a journeyman and went to every combine you can think of and every tryout um, for years until I actually got my break. So um, here goes my story and I hope it helps all you guys achieve something because uh, I was an underdog and, and, and I do believe underdogs can have their day. So I'm um, from Connecticut, Norwalk, Connecticut, and I was a standout high school player like uh, most American soccer players were back then when I was growing up. And uh, basically I had a family friend named Giovanni Savarese who was just recently the coach of Portland Timbers. He might still be, I have to check that. But um, out of high school, he felt I could play with the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars, who are now the Red Bulls. And he invited me in uh, to train with the team. And being 18 years old and being able to go train with the Metro Stars and playing with their youth academy and their reserve team, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a professional forever. Uh, when the Red Bulls came in and bought the Metro Stars, uh, they cleaned house and that meant cleaning me as well. And I was left with nothing. Like a lot of you guys, just looking for an opportunity. So I uh, ended up getting a job at Gap and saving up money and flying to, ev well, flying, traveling to every combine you can think of. I mean, you name it, I went to it. USL, MLS, whatever tryout there was, I went to it. Slept on buses, uh, slept on trains, uh, Greyhounds, whatever it was to get there. Um, and I would go to all these combines and I'd do well, but it always felt like they weren't really looking for anyone. Um, but I, I was optimistic and I really felt I could play at the next level, so I kept going to combines. And um, I went to the Atlanta Silverbacks Combine, who is now Atlanta United, or Atlanta United's MLS team in there, but it was Atlanta Silverbacks and they were a pretty big team. I met an English guy uh, who was at the combine as a player, and that's what you got to understand when you go to tryouts and combines. You have to understand the opportunity to be scouted is very slim, but you don't just go there with one thing in mind and put all your eggs in that one basket. You go there to also network, to learn, to see what the experience is about. And that's one thing I, I you know, a lot of guys are saying, should I go to combine? You have nothing and nobody knows who your name, who your name. Wouldn't it make sense to knock on as many doors as you can? Because you never know which one might open. But anyway, I went to the Atlanta Silverbacks Combine and I met this guy from England and he thought I could play professionally in England. He wanted to set me up with an agent. So even though I didn't get anything out of any of these combines, any of these tryouts, I met this guy. And he said his agent could get me something. So he said, could you get to England? And I said, yeah. Now being 19 years old, I said, yeah, go to England to play professionally, 100%. Didn't know this guy other than being meeting him at a combine. And um, I flew on a one-way ticket to England. And this guy tried to, tried to help me, um, but couldn't because he really didn't have an agent. He was coming towards the end of his career, and he wanted to be an agent. So he made me believe that he had an agent, and we're good friends now. Um, and he's actually an agent for real now. But um, he made me believe that he had an agent who could help me. And... Um, when I got there, there was no opportunity. But I didn't want to go back to America and play PDL or go to college, you know, play the, do the college route because being a scout now and helping so many players, I knew the same thing then that I don't now. There's no scouts at NISA games. There's no scouts at MPSL games or PDL games. And I knew that. And I wanted to be in a country where football was first, where if you played in the seventh division, you could slowly work your way up, whether it was through promotion or being the best player in the league. 
So I decided to stay in England and get a job, two jobs at that. I worked at Gap. You guys know Gap Clothing. Uh, the trucks would come in at night, at 12 o'clock at night, and I would take the boxes off the trucks and organize all the clothing and storage. And then at six in the morning, I would get out and I would take a train to London Bridge where I opened up a gym and I was a receptionist at a gym. As people came in early in the morning, they'd scan their passes and go work out. And I did that every single day while playing in the seventh division of English football, which I'm sure JD is going to show a video right now, me playing in English football. And um, I didn't even play on the first team in seventh division. I played on the reserve team. And um, the one thing I realized was a lot of my friends who I grew up playing with that were now playing professionally around the world, they had agents who would send their video out. So I had a guy come video each one of my games, as you can see here. This, this is a guy who came, videoed my game, and basically followed me around on the field. I had video highlights and I'd always create my own video highlights because I knew how important they were. So I used these video, video highlights to send around the world. I mean, I sent it to everyone. Your grandma probably got a copy of my video. Seriously, that's how many times I emailed it out. And I got a reply from two people. Uh, one was a club said they weren't interested. The other being an agent who said if I paid him $1,000, I'd get a trial in, in Switzerland. So. Being at that age, um, I had nothing to lose and I thought an agent was the route. Um, so I gave him $1,000 and I headed to Switzerland and there was no team there. There was no tryout there. So the guy basically scammed me out of $1,000. Um, so I continued to play in the, in the seventh division and networking and other opportunities came up but nothing stuck. So for two years, I was living in England playing in the seventh division. And one of my good friends who went to George Mason University had just been named captain of uh, Real Maryland, who was in the USL at the time, they're no longer a club. And he said, I called him and I said, hey, do you think you can get me a tryout in the USL? And he said, yeah, I think I could talk to the coach. And um, to this day, I don't know what happened to my apartment, my clothes or anything in England. I just had been there two years and I said, I don't have much money to my name. So if I go for this trial in the USL with the team that my friend got me, it's gotta work. So to this day, guys, I have no idea what happened to all my stuff, my apartment, everything. Cause I still had months left on my lease and I couldn't get out of the lease. Sorry, landlord, I apologize for that. But I went out to uh, Rio, Maryland and they were looking for a center back. And if you look at me, I'm not the biggest, uh, but I was a good defender. Could could win battles, just good on the ball. I know I could do the job at center back, but the coach said, all right, uh, we'll take a look at you, but you don't really fit the, the mold. Well, I played in that game against Crystal Palace Baltimore, who was also in the USL at the time, and I killed it at center back. And I absolutely, I mean, had a great game. And the coach came up to me and said, Joe, you had an amazing game, but I'm looking for a taller center back. So let me get this right. I just left everything in England. You guys, I don't know if you've been following around the whole story, but for four years, I've been chasing this dream. Two years of combines, two years of playing in England and nothing's happening for me. And I had a good game. And the reason why I can't play for you is because I'm too short, but I just played really well. So I did not get a contract, but I said, my, one of my good friends is the captain. If I could sleep on his couch and train with this team, I'll be ready for the next opportunity. So. I asked the coach if I could train and he was nice enough to let me train and I stayed on my friend's couch and basically uh, trained with the team and lived on a frat couch. Who knows what happened on that couch, but beggars can't be choosers and I needed to live somewhere and I needed to stay fit just in case an opportunity arose. Um, well, someone ended up getting hurt and it was a left back and my team said, you've been playing at practice so well. You're one of the better players here. You should take that spot. And they went in to talk to the coach and I ended up playing left back for that year and had a great year. And the one thing I take from that year is every game I got the video and I made a video highlight. So if you're watching this, video highlights are the most important thing because it's how you market yourself. So, I, sorry, I fly there. But I got, I, I played that year as a left back and did really, really well, really well. Uh, we made it to the USL semifinals. I was on the USL defensive team, had a great USL season, 
and um, thought I had made it, that I was going to be in the professional game now that I finally broke into the USL. Um, so one thing I didn't tell you was my contract when they signed me was for zero dollars. I didn't make one dollar playing that year. And I knew guys were on a thousand to twelve hundred a month plus housing. But when they offered me zero money, what else did I have? I had to prove myself. So USL defensive team, USL uh, semifinalist. Season's over. It's time for them to offer me a new contract. And they offer me 200 bucks a month when everyone else is making 1000 and 1200 They must have thought, because I was nice enough to play for free, that they could lowball me. And uh, ended up not taking it, which was a hard decision because I went back to working a job at my parents' restaurant making pizzas. So you can see there in five years from MLS reserve to combines to living in England to playing in the USL and being all defensive team to back to making pizzas at my parents' restaurant. A lot of you guys chase the dream for a year and you quit. I'm five years in and yet to make a dollar. You're working like a dog just to play the game I love and, and, and try to make a name for myself. Well, I was making pizzas and I'm sure if any of you guys follow us or watch our videos, I talk about networking and how important it is. A guy came in with a European accent to the restaurant and it was just me and him and he wanted a pizza. So I made him a pizza. And I said, hey, you got an accent, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Iceland. I said, Iceland, do they play soccer in Iceland? And I honestly didn't know at the time. You know, you, you hear about Iceland, you're thinking about this freezing cold place with a bunch of snow. Does anyone play football there or soccer there? He said, of course they do. My brother is actually the director of a team there in Iceland. I said, really? What did I have? Video highlights. So back then you had to have a DVD and I mailed it to Iceland. And the team saw it and they liked me. And guess what? They flew me out to Iceland, paid for my hotel and food while I was there to try out. Five years in, finally get that break where someone just gives me a real chance where I don't have to come out of pocket. So when you guys complain about paying for tryouts and combines and things, five years, five years. So I get there and I do really well as a left back and they signed me. They signed me for $300 a month plus housing and food. And uh, I was happy. I, I couldn't tell you how happy it was because it was the first time in my career where I was getting paid. And I felt I was, I was given a real opportunity. I don't got to pay for housing or food or nothing. Um, so I took that 300 and I killed it. 13 games and I did really well. Team of the week every week. Uh, one of the better players in the league and our team was sitting in first place. And about 13 games in, I get a phone call. And EF Cole Maryham of the Finnish Premier League were interested in me and put a transfer request in for me. And I signed. So think about that, five years not making a dollar to making $300 a month to signing one of the biggest teams in Finland for 3,000 euros a month. I remember sitting there when the coach brought me in and said the team was interested, I, I felt like crying. Cause I had worked so hard for that moment. And uh, I got to Finland and I killed it. Played left back, the team needed a left back. Um, to stay up, they needed to win their last six games. And I was able to have a really good last six games and the team stayed up and they offered me a new deal um, for a great, uh, a better contract. And uh, I felt like I had made it, man. I felt like I was the king of the world. Go back home at $3,000 a month. I'm driving down the road with like rap music on thinking I made it because uh, you know, I had worked so hard to get to this point. It was just a happy moment in my life. But I um, ended up speaking up at one of the team gatherings to the coach because the team wasn't happy with the way we were playing. And being the leader and one of the leaders on the team, um, I thought it'd be right to speak to the coach about how we were playing because everyone was complaining and I wanted to help the chemistry of the team. Well, he was an old school coach and there was a language barrier and he took it the wrong way. And in 2011, after being an amazing player for six games and helping them and signing a two-year contract, I didn't play one game because this guy put me in the fridge, in the freezer, because he thought I went against what he said. And even though teams were interested in me throughout the year, they wouldn't let me go. And it sucked because I could feel like I was in the freezer and he wouldn't even give me the time of day. And I had had such a good six games and such a good season the year prior to help them stay up. Um, 
my teammates were awesome. And when another team came in for me during the end of the year, they um, they put their name out and said, this guy's a good player and he's not playing here. You should give him a chance and let him go. And uh, the sporting director agreed after a lot of players went in to speak to him. And I was transferred to VPS in the Finnish Premier League. And I was buzzing. It felt like my life was given back to me. Now I could... I could show again because my career I had worked so hard to get to this point and it felt like it plateaued because I wasn't playing and I was uh, I was a good player. I mean, at practice, I'd kill it. So my first practice with VPS, I'd kill it. Uh, my second practice was playing small-sided and I get a ball thrown out to me and I flick it over the goalkeeper and jump over him and land on my ankle in here. But And uh, I knew something was wrong immediately and I remember hitting the ground like, oh, no, no, no this can't be. Doctors came out, gave me an MRI, and they confirmed I tore the ligaments on the outside of my ankle and that I would need surgery and that I wouldn't be able to finish the season. So just like that, from the lowest to lows, to getting a $300 contract, to getting a $3,000 contract, to killing it, to not playing, to getting transferred to a back low. So there were two months left in the season and I tried everything to play, but with torn ligaments, I couldn't. So I went back home, had the surgery, did the rehab, and the team didn't offer me a new contract. And there was only one place to go. That was work. I had to go back home and work and make pizzas. So you see my career again. So making pizzas at my parents' restaurant again, and my team in Iceland were looking for good players, so I called them and they allowed me to come back. But something had changed. I lost my love for the game. I wasn't training. It felt like all the things... I felt like I was owed to be at that top level. I didn't want to go back to Iceland. And that's one thing players do. They, they think the game owes them something. But what you ho I hope you hear from this story is even when you're at your highest, you can hit your lowest just as quick. And from your lowest, you can hit a high again. So I felt like the game owed me something. And I went back to Iceland and wasn't the same player. And um, even though I did well and I, I, I played some games I started, some games I didn't. And, uh, but I just didn't have that eye of the tiger anymore, that drive. Um, but I caught another lifeline. FFUR were looking for an outside back to come in and help them. They were in fourth place in the Finnish Premier League and they needed to compete for Europe. And one of my friends had um, recommended me and they offered me a contract. So I caught another lifeline to go back to the Finnish Premier League and restart my career. But um, I did well and I had some ups and downs. We went there, we didn't qualify for Europe, we finished in fifth place. Um, and I just had lost my love for the game. There were a lot of things, I mean, I'd be here all day and tell you all the things that happened, but there were a lot of ups and downs that made me lose my love for the game. And um, I, had, I had more years left on my contract and I decided to retire from the game. And I wanted to help guys like me and educate them on the industry and help them get scouted. All the ups and downs I went through, I wanted to help them. Um, and Soccer Visa was born. Um, so there are a lot of details in this video that I didn't add uh, because honestly I'd be there forever from being scammed by agents to sleeping in airports to the training I did. I mean, if I detailed all those things, it would take, uh, take a long time. But I hope in this video you understand that you can go from nothing to something and from something to nothing just as fast. And it's not about opportunity. It's about knocking on doors and creating your own opportunities when you don't have a name for yourself. So if you're an underdog or an aspiring professional or someone just looking to be successful in something, I hope you hear my story and see the time it took for me to actually get to where I wanted to go. And then my own drive is what killed me in the end. It's up to you to continue pushing yourself because no one else will. So I hope that story helps you. And JD, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure coaching you and working with you. And I hope this video helps people watching it. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoy Joe's story, be sure to go and check out his channel. As of right now, he's showing you guys how He's on his journey to creating his own professional soccer team, which is going to be really cool down here in Costa Rica. And also, if you like the channel, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Jadabini TV is out.